Hi friends, once again, good evening and welcome back to my channel Mukambika Nursing. Friends, here we are discussing questions for ESIC and RRB exam preparation. We are discussing subject wise questions and today we can see questions from cardiovascular system. First question, damage to which heart chamber causes acute pulmonary edema? Options, option A, left atrium. Option B, right atrium. Option C, left ventricles. Option D, right ventricles. Acute pulmonary edema is one of the life-threatening condition which occurs from severe heart failure. This, in case of this acute pulmonary edema, the left ventricles fail to eject sufficient amount of blood. So, the pressure in the lungs will be increases due to the accumulation of this blood. Here the question is damage to which heart chamber cause acute pulmonary edema it is left ventricle option C is the correct answer. And the next question mitral regurgitation is seen in options option A ventricular systole, option B ventricular diastole, option C atrial systole and option D atrial diastole. Mitral regurgitation means it's one of the backward flow of blood through the mitral wall. Okay, it is occurs in ventricular systole. Option A is the correct answer. Mitral regurgitation is seen in ventricular systole. Move on to the next question. Which enzyme found only in myocardium? Options Option A troponin T, Option B troponin I, Option C myoglobin, Option D lactate dehydrogenase. The enzyme which is found only in myocardium is troponin I. Option B is the correct answer. Move on to the next question. The triad signs and symptoms seen in cardiac tamponade is options. Option A chest pain, heart failure and syncope. Option B muffled heart sound, distended neck vein and hypotension. Option C tachypnea, bradycardia and tachycardia. Option D all of this. Here the question is, what is the triad symptom seen in cardiac tamponade? Cardiac tamponade means it's an accumulation of fluid in the pericardial space. And the classical symptoms we can see, they are known as Beak's triad. Okay, is the collection of three signs associated with cardiac tamponade. They are hypotension with narrowed pulse pressure, jugular venous distension and muffled heart sound. It is there in our option, muffled heart sound, distended neck vein and hypotension. They are the triad signs and symptoms seen in cardiac tamponade. And the next question, what is the immediate goal of treatment for cardiac tamponade? Options, option A, relieving pain, option B, relieving anxiety, option C, relieving intrapericardial pressure, option D, improving mobility. Question is, what is the immediate goal or immediate aim for the treatment of cardiac tamponade? Cardiac tamponade means, as we already discussed, it's an accumulation of fluid in the pericardial space. And the normal pericardial fluid is 15 to 50 ml in adults. So, here the answer will come. Option C, relieving intrapericardial pressure is the immediate goal of treatment of cardiac tamponade is the accumulation of fluid in the pericardial space so we have to relieve the pressure in the fluid move on to the next question normal cardiac output is options option a 1 to 2 liter per minute option b 2 to 4 liter per minute option c 5 to 6 liter per minute option d 6 to 8 liter per minute is the question normal cardiac output Cardiac output is equal to strocolium into heart rate. Normal strocolium is 70 ml. Heart rate is 72 beats per minute. So, 70 into 72 it is 5040 ml. It is approximately 5 to 6 liters. Option C is the correct answer. Sir. Move on to the next question. Any disturbance that block the transmission of nerve wimbles from SA node downwards is known as options option a cardiac arrhythmia option b cardiac dysarrhythmia option c heart block option d heart attack question is the blockage of the transmission of nerve impulse from sa node downwards is known as sa node which is situated between 
superior vena cava and uh, right atrium here the correct answer is it is heart block option c is the correct answer move on to the next question halter monitoring means options option a ambulatory bp option b ambulatory ecg option c hourly bp option d ecg while sleeping halter monitoring is also known as ambulatory electrocardiography and this halter monitor is used for tracing ecg tracing and this may be recorded continuously for a day or longer time in outpatient basis so this halter monitoring is also known as ambulatory ecg option b is the correct answer sir and the next question the drug that is used for stress test is options option a atropine option b adrenaline option c dobutamine option d thallium here the question the drug which is used for stress test is dobutamine option c is the correct answer move on to the next question boot shaped heart in a chest x-ray is commonly associated with options option a aortic regurgitation option b mitral regurgitation option c tetralogy of fallot option d all of this is boot shaped heart is the characteristic feature of tetralogy of fallot option c is the correct answer and the next question auscultation over the left mid clavicular line at the level of fifth intercostal space is the area for s1 it indicate location of which heart wall question is auscultating the left mid clavicular line at the level of fifth intercostal space here which heart wall is located so it is uh, clue is there s1 space is the area for s1 so s1 heart sound is occurs due to the closure of bicuspid and tricuspid wall or closure of mitral and tricuspid wall mitral wall is also known as bicuspid wall so the answer is it is bicuspid wall bicuspid or mitral wall is located in the apical area that is left mid clavicular line at the level of fifth intercostal space and the next question internal jugular vein pressure determine the pressure of options option a right atrium option b right ventricles option c left ventricles option d left atrium jugular vein internal jugular vein pressure determine the pressure of the right atrium option a is the correct answer normal jugular venous pressure is 6 to 8 cm of water Move on to the next question. What is the normal amount of pericardial fluid? This question we already discussed. Options: Option A, five to ten mL. Option B, fifteen to fifty mL. Option C, fifty to hundred mL. Option D, hundred to one fifty mL. And the correct answer is it is fifteen to fifty mL in adult. Option B is the correct answer. Normal amount of pericardial fluid. And the next question. the drug of choice for supraventricular tachycardia is options option a amiodarone option b adenosine option c adrenaline and option d atropine which is the drug drug of choice in case of supraventricular tachycardia it is adenosine option b is the correct answer and the next and last question which of the following is known as good cholesterol options option a ldl option b vd vldl option c hdl and option d triglyceride good cholesterol good cholesterol is option c hdl hdl is high density lipoprotein lipoproteins are molecules which helps to transport cholesterol in the blood they are mainly high density lipoprotein and low density lipoprotein this high density lipoprotein is known as good cholesterol and low density lipoprotein is known as bad cholesterol bad cholesterol is associated with the development of cardiovascular diseases normal cholesterol is between 140 to 199 mg per deciliter normal ldl is lower than 130 mg per deciliter and normal hdl is 30 to 70 mg per deciliter and normal triglyceride level is lower than 200 mg per deciliter 
so far we discussed questions from cardiovascular system surely this questions will helpful for your studies if it is useful for your studies please subscribe my channel and share my videos to your friend circle